Hello everyone, welcome to my new video on where I want to show you um, my approach for an AI to take cover. And we have this simple scene here with cover blocks and um, yeah, I just call them cover blocks. This is These are the objects the AI should take cover in. In blue is our player and in orange is our AI that uh, should take cover. <coughs> Now the basic principle is um, that the AI first checks if a cover object is close enough and um, for this the, the cover objects need to be on a specific layer um, I call it cover, you can ignore all the other layers here and um, if the cover object is close enough um, then first of all the AI just walks to um, the cover object right? And we also check, for example, yeah, we need a trigger to do so. So um, if, for example, the player is close, then the AI just starts doing it. So if the cover object is close enough, then the AI will go to the cover object and around the cover, once it reached the cover object, um, it checks for positions around this cover object. Okay, so and then if there is a position um, that could be used as cover, the AI goes to that position. Yeah. So now, um, yeah, the player just has a simple player move script from the previous videos, and um, and we have the camera, of course, that sh that follows the player like in the previous videos. And our AI has a nav mesh agent and a rigid body. We don't really need the rigid body, and it has the script take cover tutorial. Um, it looks a bit complicated, but um, don't worry about it. It's actually pretty easy. So let's show you how it looks like uh, when we use it. So you see the AI goes to the cover object and then it hides behind it. And if we go around it, it should always go behind it. And it, yeah, you can also see this uh, potential for improvement here. So I'm really happy f uh, for you uh, to let me know if you have any suggestions on how to improve this. Um, but it works fine for let's say cover objects that are not too big so this big one here is almost uh, too big uh, with the settings um, I'm using in the take cover script at the moment uh, but it's not really a problem so you can increase basically the, the range it looks for positions okay so we just walk around a bit a little more and then yeah it always goes to cover um, one thing for improvement would be for example to stop the nav mesh agent once um, the AI is behind the cover um, so it doesn't wobble around um, as much as it does at the moment. Okay, so let's have a look at um, yeah, the nav mesh agent here. You can see the stopping distance is set very small but um, yeah, it doesn't really matter. So let's look into the script. Basically, we have um, our uh, uh, bool here. This is finding the positions behind the cover object once we are close to the cover object. And we have this method here that checks whether the cover object is close enough or not. And then we have the void take cover where we basically just go to the positions that could serve as cover. And we have face player here, um, which we which have introduced in a previous video where so the AI just looks at the player. And this is our decision making in the update function. But let's start at the beginning. Um, because we're using um, Unity Nav Mesh Agent, we need to add using Unity Engine.ai. And then we, of course, need a reference of to our nav mesh agent. And um, we don't need to do the decision making every frame. So if you have like a lot of enemies in your scene, you should only do it uh, like every couple of frames. So in, in this um, script, we're doing it every tenth frame. That's what frame interval will be used for later. Then face player factor is actually from a previous script, uh, sorry, a previous video. Um, so yeah, check out the, my previous video on it. And yeah, we need to store the random positions that we find. Um, so the 
positions behind cover we need to store it in a vector 3 uh, variable that's what we do here and we need to store our cover points um, as well and then we have the range um, of the sphere in which we look for the random position so once we reach the cover object um, with a we have a sphere with a radius of 6 right or with a range of 6 sorry and then um, inside of it we look for the positions okay so the bigger you make it the bigger this range will, will be and uh, the more performance it will cost actually so then um, we need the layer mask uh, so if we want to go to cover so we need to check for the objects that are on on the cover layer um, this is uh, what you need this layer mask here for so you can set that up in the editor on your script and uh, yeah we need another vector 3 to actually save the cover objects uh, that we want to go to okay so um, all the objects that can serve as cover um, the visible layer mask is basically the same uh, but yeah you will see later that you it's good to have it as well and this is our max cover distance we just I just use it for the decision making um, if the distance is smaller than than 30 yeah cover is close enough let's go to the cover all right and that's what the public bool cover is close is for and um, also the public bool cover is uh, not reached right so um, yeah if cover is still too far away then cover is not reached will be true and this means yeah let's go to the cover object then um, we also need distance to to cover position um, that will be just to check whether we reached the position behind the cover or um, so the random position that is actually the cover position and the disk to cover object um, yeah it's just another thing uh, let me not I don't want to tell you wrong stuff uh, I will see later what it's used for um, but it's also yeah just some distance check um, we will see it when we go to the actual uh, functions and um, yeah so that's just used for the decision making again um, so if the player is in range, okay, let's do this, go check for cover and go to cover. Okay, so in our update function. So now the really, um, the key stuff comes now. So um, here we have test cover position and int. Um, so we have this bool random point and we uh, have a for loop and we do it like 10 times because test cover position is 10 times. And in this for loop, um, we basically check around vector 3.center, which is our AI basically, and with the range range rand point. And then we save the information in the vector 3 result cover. Okay, so let's, yeah, we do it 10 times. And then um, inside this sphere, basically, uh, because random position equals center plus random inside unit sphere multiplied with a uh, range rand point gives us a uh, certain range around our um, our uh, AI in which we test which position is actually good as a cover position All right and then from from this position um, so first of all we call we um, calculate the direction to the player and then we shoot array from this position to the in the player direction right and if this ray hits something um, like for example a cover object we know okay this position is good to use as cover right so that's what we do here we uh, shoot the ray and um, save it in hit test cover um, the ray has also the ray uh, range rent point um, which could actually be a mistake here so the ray should be longer than the range rand points that may be a reason why the air looks wobbly so instead of range rand point here put something um, larger in right okay so I don't want to make the video again so um, yeah just uh, exchange range rand point here with something larger uh, like 30 
units for example and then on the visible layer you put everything that can uh, obstruct the view okay so environmental objects anything that is static and then we just check in this case or in my case here whether the test collider game object layer is on the cover layer which is number 18 in my case and if that is the case we store it in result cover and it returns true um, if there's no object there it returns false and the result cover is zero okay so in the start function we just have to get the nav mesh agent and then in update we check if the nav mesh agent is active and enabled just to be safe and then uh, if time the frame count uh, percentage frame interval is zero uh, this is the frame check so frame interval is 10 we, we declare that at the beginning and um, if it becomes zero then so every 10 frames uh, we do our distance check and because we use square magnitude um, you need to uh, use the square distances of course so range distance multiplied by range distance so then if um, yeah our distance is smaller than this range distance we know the players in range is true and then we outside of this we say if players range is true then we do stuff okay so this is far more better for performance than to do it every frame like I did it in the previous videos so if you <laughs> look them up and use this or use my approaches um, yeah try to change it okay so and then if the player is in range we want to check the cover distance and uh, the, the distance to our cover object to check whether it's close enough for the AI to go to and then take cover behind it so for this we do uh, physics overlap sphere again and um, s we store all the colliders that are on our cover layer, uh, layer and um, yeah then we we need um, basically to declare the float min square distance um, it's not as important but just put it in and then yeah we cage our uh, transform position of the AI that's the vector 3 and then in the for loop we check whether the collider is close enough or not so first of all we do a distance calculation again here and if this square distance to center is smaller than our min minimum square distance um, we save the nearest colliders in our collider array array okay and once we have that we want to check if um, the cover object is actually close enough um, for uh, our AI to go to that's what this distance check is for so if the distance is actually if the cover distance is greater than our maximum cover distance that we declare or you have to declare um, then cover is close is true and then we store it and we want to go to so that we can go to the cover later on okay so cover is close becomes true then cover object is our nearest collider to transform the position and then we can also check if we are already reached it so if we already standing if the AI is already basically standing be next to the cover object um, that's what we would use for decision making um, so and if we haven't reached it um, so the cover distance is bigger than our distance to the cover object um, cover is not reached right and if the distance is actually bigger so if, if cover distance is bigger than the max cover distance um, cover is close becomes false and then you should do something else so um, yeah for example chase a player or attack the player or whatever okay and then if there's no cover object at all then cover is close false as well so let's go back to the decision making to play this through again so players in range becomes true we do our check whether there are cover objects or not and then if the cover is close is true uh, we we had checked whether it's reached or not if it's not reached yet then we say an set destination to the cover object if it's if the cover is not reached then um, we take cover uh, sorry if the cover is reached we take cover and we face the player all right and then if the cover is close is false actually so there's no cover in the vicinity um, we you should do something else so now let's check our take cover 
take cover is basically the bool from uh, that uses the bool from the from the very top <coughs> here. So if this one returned true, um, we have saved this random point, right? And um, we save here. We save it again in, in a cover point, and then we basically just say. Um, or check if the nav is active and enabled again and then we set the destination to the cover point um, so the nav mesh agent goes to the cover point cover point is the position that is where the view is obstructed to the player right, and then we just do another distance check um, just a bool for <coughs> controlling that it working basically so if this becomes true then we know Hey, so is hiding is true means okay he is taking cover he's behind an object right now at the moment right, so let's press play again <coughs> and then you see it goes to cover but yeah as I said there's potential there for improvement um, yeah change this one very well I just said I will put it in the um, comments or in the text to the video as well um, that you should probably change that and um, yeah here so the critical um, values are this to cover object if this is bigger than range rent point for example um, you won't get close enough to the actual cover object and then range rent point is too small so that the, the radius is too small to actually find a position behind the cover object or the same if your cover objects are too big and range rent point is just five units you won't be able to find uh, <coughs> um, a position behind the object so yeah play around with it and yep but never make distance to cover object um, like bigger than range rent point okay and yeah, increase the values if you have bigger covers and so on. Um, so yeah, this to cover object and range rain points that are the critical ones. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, let me know. I would love to hear your suggestions for improvement um, on the script and on how to take cover. And yeah, hopefully you just enjoy it. Um, yeah, that's all I have to say. I won't have much time to do more videos anyway, but. Um, yeah, good luck to you all. See you soon, maybe. Bye-bye. <laughs>